CataractCoach.com. Cataract quiz, what is this? Look carefully, there's something on the posterior capsule. Got an anonymous resident operating this case here, and you can see that there is something going on behind the posterior capsule. So putting some tripan blue dye in, wash that out. We've obviously sped the video up here. We'll slow it down for the good part, don't you worry. Now, there's the visclots going inside the eye. Here's another pair of being made. And now going in here, and let's see, starting the capsule perhaps. So if you look there, behind the posterior capsule, there is a big white opacity there. And what do you think that is? That's a little hard to see at this point, but as we complete the case, we'll see more. Now, let me tell you about cataractcoach.com, the teaching website. There's so much great free material. If you're a resident, go get the free book. It's there for the download, for the asking. There's a curriculum series. We've got the top podcasts in ophthalmology. There's so much more than just the YouTube videos. The onus is on you to check it out and make yourself a better surgeon. Back to our case here now. Okay, got in the caps, rexus, forceps here, getting a rexus done. This looks like a very young patient. Don't know exact ages here. And you can see grabbing with the forceps, getting a rexus done. Tripan blue dye, as you know, in a young patient is particularly helpful because it makes the capsule less elastic. In a pediatric patient, this anterior lens capsule is very, very elastic. Compared to an older patient, your typical 60, 70, 80 year old cataract patient, the capsule is relatively inelastic compared to a young person. So here, getting a Rex is done. Nice, nice, nice. Now, this lens itself looks very, very soft, so it's very easy to aspirate. Probably can remove the entire lens with just by manual irrigation aspiration. There's the capsule Rex. I like it. Looks pretty good. Measuring it out there, sure. And now, let's see. Release some viscoelastic and perhaps some hydrodissection. Again, a lens that looks pretty soft can be easily just aspirated with the by manual IA. You certainly don't need a phaco probe. And so plenty of hydrodissection is a good idea. But the question is, what was that opacity you saw on the posterior capsule? Is that behind the posterior capsule? Is the capsule weak at that point? And what do you think? Now, the way the surgeon's operating, you're probably guessing that there's no weakness there at that spot. Now, let's see. You've got a phaco probe going in the eye. Okay, so no IA, just phaco probe. Oh, my God, look how soft this is. You could have easily done this with the IA probe. I would not have used the phaco probe in here. I would have just used IA probe, and I'd use a bimanual approach here. You'd be able to get all that lens material out with just the IA probe. Here, doing it with a phaco probe, just be careful. The last thing you want to do is puncture a capsule. And so now, let's see, going in with a bimanual approach. No, viscoelastic, viscodissection. Okay, you probably guessed I'm watching the video for the first time with you. Now, let's see what we got here. Irrigation with the left hand. The right hand is the aspirator. And cleaning that up. But looking back there, what is going on? Have you figured this out yet? This is our quiz. And I'll give you a few hints here. A young patient. Has had this since birth. This is almost always unilateral. And look carefully. You're going to see what's going on there. And this is persistent fetal vasculature syndrome. So persistent fetal vasculature. These are the, the vascular that didn't regress prior to this baby being born. And so now we can see that's there in the vitreous cavity. This is not a terrible case of it. Remember, the patients who do have persistent fetal vascular tends to be one eye. You can often see it at birth where you get a little bit of a white reflex. You certainly, with a leukocoria, have to make sure it's not something bad going on like retinoblastoma, right? This is like the board questions. You get a little baby with leukocoria, White pupil, what do you think is going on? It could be this PHPV, it could be retinoblastoma, it could be congenital cataract, it could be a lot of things, so it's really important to check that out. So now, let's see, it looks like probably enlarging the incision to get an eye well inside the eye. But what should you do with that PHPV, we used to call it, but now we call it persistent fetal vascular. What should you do about this? Well, in most situations, you're probably not going to do a whole lot. So here comes an eye well going inside the capsule bag. Let's see the three-piece lens. So there's a 7L rule, leading haptic looks like number 7. Trailing haptic going inside the eye, and that's the capital letter L. So the eye well is in the correct orientation. As we know, the anti-S. If it looks like the letter S, I feel like I'm making a stupid mistake, and I don't want to feel that way. So now more viscoelastic going inside. Now, should you do something to intervene here? Should you do a posterior capsule rexus, maybe cuts off some of that the, the vessel that's attached there? could. Again, this fetal vascular does predispose the patient to having other issues in life, such as cataract, which you see here, glaucoma, even posterior segment disease. You also have to be careful because this can be amblyogenic. 
Meaning if this is occluding the visual axis, the patient could develop amblyopia. And so again, it's imperative to diagnose this at a very young age and treat the patient appropriately. But that's the answer to today's quid. It's persistent fetal vasculature. Interesting case. Thank you for submitting that. And remember, you got to check out the Cataract Coach website. If you're a resident, so much great material. It's all for free. You got to go check it out.